Hey, how's it going? What's up? What up? Yo. Hello? Cool. <laughs> Exciting stuff today. We are talking about getting your first camera and or lens for concert and music photography. And even if you already have those, I still have some valuable information for you. If you just want to come to this video, figure out what camera and what lens to get, I got you. You just get a Nikon or a Canon DSLR and a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and go to a concert. That's, that is a good starting kit. I say Nikon and Canon because they're the cheapest and I say 50 millimeter 1.8 because that is usually the cheapest lens that works in low light. However, I don't think that really does you any justice or help. I believe that I can teach you the things you need to look for in both cameras and lenses so that when you do get them, you know exactly why you're getting them and then moving forward, you know why you need to upgrade and things like that. Cool? All right, sick. Music photography, kind of crazy. Lots of moving lights, a lot of things are changing constantly. People are moving, people are falling on you. There's a lot of things going on that distract you from getting the images you want. So it's important to get a fast camera and lens combination that is capable of shooting in low light conditions. Now, cameras, they're kind of like computers and I didn't really understand that when I first started photography, but they're tools and not only are they tools, but they also, they kind of deteriorate with time. Lenses on the other hand, they're a little bit more of an investment. They are gonna last you a long time and you can use the same lens for 10, 20, 30 years, and it will be totally, perfectly, absolutely just fine. Starting cameras cost a couple hundred dollars and they can go all the way up to a couple thousand. Lenses, same thing. They can start at like a couple hundred dollars and also go up to a couple thousand. And sometimes the lens can even be more expensive than your camera. All right, like most things in life, I hate to break it to you, but the more money you spend on a camera, the better the camera is going to be. However, you don't need to spend all your money because something that costs a little bit might work just as well for you as something that costs a lot more. Cameras are tools and they're here to make your job easier, or in this case, possible. Cameras are tools and you just need something that works, and most importantly, works for you. So the biggest contributing factor to buying anything, budget. How much money do you have? You're gonna have to spend a couple hundred dollars to get any camera. Um, 200 to $600 for a starting level, and as you go up it goes to about 1200, 1500, couple thousand, and you get all the way up to five thousand, six thousand dollars when you get to the pro level cameras. But the cheapest cameras, honestly, they're gonna work great for you. I do not suggest buying a used camera for your first camera unless you're getting it for somebody you trust. Maybe family, maybe friend, or something along those lines. It's really hard to tell, especially if you don't know what you're doing, what is wrong with the camera, and you can't see most of the parts that matter. So I do suggest buying new for your first one, but just get a cheap one. Second part, system. And when I say system, I mean brands. So Canon, Nikon, Sony, etc. Canon and Nikon are the go-to and there's a reason behind that. They're reliable, they're cheap, they're easy to understand, easy to use, and they don't break very easily. Sony recently has kind of been taking over, however they're not as cheap as Canon and they are not DSLRs, they are mirrorless. The difference there is a DSLR is a digital single lens reflex and a mirrorless is mirrorless. And this just has to do with how the camera takes a picture. Not super important, not gonna affect your photography very much. However, it does affect the price of a camera, so it's something to take into consideration. I do suggest starting with a Canon or Nikon DSLR. The most important part of any camera you get is to make sure that it has full manual controls. And that means that you are able to adjust the aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. And if, if you don't know what those are yet, that's fine. But basically, those are the three factors that go into creating a photograph. Almost all DSLRs are gonna have this option, so it's not really something you have to worry about, but just something to keep in mind. Now, there are a few more specific things that come into play when looking for a camera to photograph concerts with. And unfortunately, a lot of these things do increase the price of your camera. However, because technology has gotten so good, even the cheapest cameras are capable of a lot more than the most expensive ones were 10 years ago. So don't worry if you're buying a camera for a couple hundred dollars, it's gonna be great. First thing is burst speed, and burst speed is when you press the shutter on your camera, how fast does it take those photos? And how long is the time in between each photograph? Obviously the faster the better, because if somebody jumps up the air and you just hold down the shutter, you're gonna have more options to choose from. As long as your camera doesn't sound like this, you should be just fine. Again, the faster the better, the more expensive the camera is going to get. The next is quick autofocus, and this is the time it takes for your camera to 
get your subject in focus. Make it clear, make it crisp, make it sharp. Now, some cameras can track your subject and they'll focus continuously. That is awesome. It's called continuous AF. Almost any camera with a removable lens, something like this, will focus quick enough for you to be able to shoot fast. I do suggest using back button autofocus for concerts, and if you don't know how to do that, I have a video for it as well. Next, we have fast shutter, and that means that when you press that button down, your camera takes the photo instantly. Some of them have a little bit of a delay, and you wanna avoid those cameras, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the moment after the moment you wanted, and all that image is gonna be is a memory of how you messed up. Press the button, takes a photo. Press the button, takes the photo. Pretty straightforward, right? Weather sealed gets important down the line because a lot of concerts these days are outside and at festivals, and sometimes, with the exception of where I live, San Diego, it rains. So, you wanna have a weather sealed camera, and that becomes a little bit more pricey, so if you can't afford that, put a bag around your camera. Anything plastic, poke a hole for your lens, you're good to go. You're gonna look all kinds of goofy, but it's efficient and you can't argue with results. All DSLRs have a great battery life. There are very few that don't. Mirrorless cameras, on the other hand, some of them do not have the greatest battery life and this can be solved by getting more batteries or just sticking to some of the newer models which have since kind of improved their battery life. Low light performance is probably, is one of the most difficult things about owning a camera because the cheaper the camera, the worse it is in low light conditions. And as you and I both know, concerts, pretty low light. If you ever wondered why one Canon camera is $5,000 and another is $400, well, this is one of the contributing factors. You see, low light performance is tied in with how good of a sensor the camera has. Better sensor, more expensive camera. Now that you know the components and the criteria I take into consideration when purchasing a, purchasing a camera, it's time to try one out. Go to your local camera store, test out some cameras, ask them for their cheapest Canon, their cheapest Nikon, see what feels right, test it out, and then you'll know what to purchase. I personally buy all my camera gear from B&H Photo because it's tax-free with the exception of a few states, and when you're making a big investment, that saves you a lot of money. Oh, I almost forgot, your first lens. Get the 50mm 1.8. They're small, they're easy, they're quick, and they shoot in low light very well. If you look at lenses, they'll say something like f1.8, f2.0, f4.0, things like that. You want that number to be as low as possible. The lower the number, the better the lens is going to be shooting at in low light. If you want more information on exact cameras and exact lenses, please go to my blog. I'll put a link in the description. Also, dpreview.com best place to go for side-by-side -side comparisons of different cameras. I'll put a link in the caption as well. Amazing resource. All right, I hope I helped you out today. If you have any questions, as always, just leave a comment, tweet me, message me on Instagram, whatever works. I'm here to help. Yeah, good luck getting your first camera. Peace.